ready for the blackout part two? Come to this blackout, ready to have fun. In July 16th in Atlanta, Georgia. It's almost time for the blackout. Hey, is you ready for the blackout? YouTube, this is your boy Jamar and Four here once again to discuss this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop. I forget why they didn't show it last week, but let's need to hear no there. This episode kind of didn't make sense <laughs> with some of the alleged plot lines. Like, Mona, I think you slacking. I think you got some loopholes in your shit because some of the reason why people are doing things aren't making sense anymore. But we can go ahead and dive quick into this. I don't believe this is going to be long. Um, so first of all, we start where Scrap is getting his sentence. Now, I was shocked. I did. When he said, uh, you know, do you take full responsibility for your actions? He said, yeah, you know, but I hope you be lenient today because it's supposed to be a minimum of five years, a maximum of 30 years. Now, I was thinking he was going to maybe get eight, maybe 10 at the most. When I just said 20 years I was like, good god damn. But you know what? Honestly, I and a lot of people have said this too. Like, we can't feel sorry for you because not only <laughs> did, was this your own decision to, you know, get involved with selling drugs in the first place, you were selling drugs while you was on probation, my nigga. Like, you <laughs> you asked. You specifically said, why not? Why can can somebody just point me to the jailhouse? I want to go back. That's what your actions were saying. Like, you can't sit here and sell drugs still on your probate. Like, you're supposed to be clean. You're supposed to have be, you know, Mr. Goody Two Shoes while you're on probation because you don't want to go back to prison. Like, who wants that? But yet, you're still out here pushing units. Like, okay, well, if you don't care about your freedom, then <laughs> shit, why should we? So that's why he got them 20 years, baby. And, you know, which is sad because when he gets out, his son gonna be a grown adult. Okay, his son's going to be 23 years old, probably turning 24. He's going to be grown. And you're going to miss literally everything. The uh, first five years of his life, all his school, teenage years, prom, all that's gone. Because you decided to be stupid. So. <laughs> and then KK over there crying, looking like a damn praying mantis. Child, bless her heart. I heard she about to go. I heard she done did some uh, on the news. She done did some dumb shit too. Stealing something. I don't know, child. They all crooked. <laughs> all them King family, they all crooked. I don't I don't think Saz done did nothing. Uh, but still, they all... Mm, something wrong with them. But getting the smaller stuff out of the way, because we're going to talk about the, the bigger part of this episode. Um, <laughs> we, see, we hear Betty Idol singing. Now, already... All ready. We know that Betty Idol's just her speaking voice. Just ooh. So when she was singing, I'm like, oh no. Uh uh. Now it's. It, if I say this, it's gonna sound bad. But it's not like a Fantasia situation. Cause you know when Fantasia be talking, she sounds. You know how Fantasia sounds. Oh, but when that bitch starts blowing and using the vocal cords. It's a whole different story. That's not the case with Betty Idol. Not even in the slightest. Like, she was up there. I, mm -mm. And then, Bet <laughs> Mama D walking in the room, jamming, bobbing her head. Like, she hearing some good shit. I'm like, girl. My dog literally got up and walked out the room when that, uh, when that scene was playing. I'm like, you know what? I understand. I get it. Because shit sounded terrible. Terrible. But... Their whole thing was they trying to, uh, she showed Mama D a video about Scrappy saying, you know, negative things about, excuse me, transgender and about how they need to show baby pictures and stop tricking people, this, that, and the fourth. Of course, you know, Mama D gets mad and says she has to talk to, you know, Betty Idol and clear things up with D Smith and all this other stuff. So we skip ahead to when they actually have this conversation, right? And again, well, hmm. Okay, a part of me understands where Scrappy was trying to go with it. I just feel like his delivery was terrible. 
I want to say what Scrappy was trying to say is if you're a transgendered woman, specifically, I believe he was talking about, if you're a transgendered woman and I guess you're dating or you're, you know, talking to a guy, you should let him know that you're transgendered just so that he doesn't feel tricked, I guess. But that whole situation is a very slippery slope because... Uh, that's the reason why you feel like a lot... Of, that's why a lot of trans people get killed is because, you know, men find out that they used to be, you know, dudes once at one point and then now their masculinity is threatened and so they feel like they have to put harm on these people. So it doesn't surprise me that, you know, trans women take their time uh, in telling somebody because you don't know this man, you know, from Adam or, you know, Steve, so... You want to take time to get to know him, just kind of see what kind of person he is, where, where his head's at, before you tell him all your kind of business like that. Like, you don't need to be saying, hi, my name is Chanice and I'm a transgender woman. Like, no. Like, that's not how this is supposed to work. So, I understand it. Like, it is important to let that be known. But he even went the far as to say, like, baby pictures and all this other shit. Like, no, nah, I... That's that's doing too much. That's just about the same as the people in this transgender bathroom. Like, you have to check your genitals at the door to make sure you got the right ones. Like, what the fuck? No. But at least, you know, they did kind of come to a... I guess it's an understanding where they kind of see where the other person is coming from. But I guess the delivery was fucked up. So, that's squashed. Now, let's get to the full-on the full -on bullshit of the episode. I am still, to this day, I know I've said this at least two or three times in these past couple of videos for Love and Hip Hop. I can't understand why Mimi is so pressed to find out about these illegitimate children. And I, I want to say she tried to give a reason this episode saying that, you know, I never put Stevie on child support because I always took care of everything. But... If he's out here having babies, best believe I'm going to be getting my money or some shit. I'm like, that still, to me, doesn't make sense. Like, if you're, have you been able to provide for her all this time, the fact that he has more children doesn't affect you. I, I don't understand the correlation between even if he has these kids... What does that have to do with you? Is Are these other kids taking uh, money out of your household? You said that you don't even have them on child support anyway. So if he's paying child support to those two baby mamas, what does that have to do with you? Why are you pressed? I, it, it doesn't make any sense. And then they go on this whole road trip, find the bitch in North Carolina, and she's going, and she's, she's cuckoo crazy because... She talking about she uh, got a two-year-old daughter. Do you want to see her? I'm thinking we about to see some little girl walk around the corner. And she's like, you know what? I lied. I never met this man a day before in my life. I just tried to use his name as a come up because, you know, Kim Kardashian came up with a sex tape. Mimi came up with a sex tape. I'm just trying to be the next hot bitch swinging from the shower ride. Like, what the... F is, this, is this what women do now? Is this the goal? Is this the goal to be the next Kim Kardashian... To get a come up off some fuckery. <laughs> like, what? the fact that she sat there and was just like, how else am I supposed to be famous? I feel like I have the talent. If you have the talent, you should be able to be get famous off of said talent. Not illegitimate, invisible babies that don't exist. Like, if you make accusations like that, aren't you eventually going to at some point have to present said baby? Especially if it's with somebody who's a, uh, well... I don't know if I want to call Stevie J a high-profile person. But, you know, somebody is, you know, people know. People are going to want to see, okay, you say you have a baby? Where they at? You know, like, I, it, I didn't understand. It, that was crazy. I'm like, okay, so she looks kind of like, like she's not, you know, her elevator doesn't go all the way up to the top. But... So once they find out that, you know, that person lied, I guess they continue to try to go find the other lady. And we find, you know, Jocelyn is talking to Don and she explains her plan and she says that she lied. And she said that her plan <coughs> was to, uh, 
was so that Mimi would get mad at Stevie and then put him on child support. But here's the thing, Jocelyn. Here's your whole, your plan doesn't make sense for this reason. If you wanted Stevie J to get, if you wanted uh, Mimi to get mad at Stevie J, why would you tell her that he has these illegitimate children as if she couldn't verify? You know, when she verifies that this isn't true, why would she be still mad at Stevie if he didn't do what he was accused of doing? You know what I'm saying? If anything, it just makes you look stupid and you look crazy. Because... It's like, what? What? <laughs> why are you even, why am I even being dragged into this? You know, speaking as Mimi, like, you wanted her to be mad at him, but yet you knew she would investigate and not find anything. So what, what was the, the, the purpose? I don't understand. <laughs> That's just making you a liar. And it doesn't make Stevie look any worse because his, his name is cleared. You know what I'm saying? So I, that whole shit didn't make a lick of sense. And then, well, I mean, even though you know we knew this before at the very beginning when they first said it, but Stevie J says on this uh, 107.9 on radio that him and Jocelyn were never actually married in the goddamn first place. So, I mean, like I said, we knew. But... It's like, what, what is... And then all this blog stuff about Stevie... Uh, 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 Jocelyn took a, a lie, de uh, lie detector test and they didn't ask her, did your husband used to watch gay porn while you were married? And they said that she was telling the truth when she said, yes, he used to do it. But then some people are like, okay, well, gay porn can be two women. I'm like, mm, technically, if you're any familiar with, you know, porn websites, gay porn does not mix gays and lesbians together there's gay porn and there's lesbian porn they're not together you i know y'all are trying to make it seem like he could possibly still be into bitches but i mean girl i'm just saying gay porn is very different from lesbian porn <laughs> you know so i mean it, it is what it is you know i'm never never surprised at this point but still, like, all this drama, child, I just want to see this reunion. I feel like this season is just dragging on at this point because they haven't done anything. This whole season, it feels like, excuse me, they've literally done nothing. No real story has stuck. I mean, I guess the whole Tommy and Scrap and that whole Tierra of nonsense, but even that was annoying after the first couple episodes. And now that he's sent off, it's like, okay, what's next? You know, I'm just, it's, it's, okay. I'm just ready for this reunion to come because it seems like it should be good, but this is still under Mona Scott's production, so you just never know. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was that was my review of this episode. It was very kind of bizarre as in like, what, what is even happening? I don't understand why these people are doing the things that they're doing. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have not purchased your blackout ticket, I'm going to need you to go on ahead and send your PayPal payment of $20 to Sweet and Greet. That's S-W-E-E-T, the letter N, Greet, G-R-E-E-T, the letter C, at gmail.com. I'm going to say that again. Sweet N Greet. C at gmail.com. Send your $20 for through PayPal. Get your ticket to the blackout because it's going to be $25 at the door. It's going to be July 15th and the 16th. On the 15th, we're going to go to Six Flags, be big old kids, ride these, uh, ele uh, I'm about to say ride the elevators, ride these roller coasters. I need to renew my life insurance policy because I ain't fucking with y'all. <laughs> but I'm going to still go ahead and you can have fun. And then on July 16th is the actual blackout event. Make sure you guys come out, support, drink, have fun, eat chicken. Because you know there's going to be chicken there. Because uh, <laughs> it was there last year. The shit was good. Um, but yeah, it's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited to see everybody. My All the new YouTubers. I'm excited to see those who are um, uh, fans of my channel as well. I'm just really, really excited to be a part of the panel this year. So this is going to be really, really good. And yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Like, like, share, subscribe.